Scientists thought Comet Ison's close encounter with the sun was its last hurrah, but now there is evidence the comet may have survived. Ison came within one million miles of our sun on Thursday. Astronomers thought it had been incinerated, but at least part of the comet seems to still be intact. Welcome to CBS This Morning, Saturday. Some astronomers expected ISON to be the comet of the century due to its brightness, but expectations diminished over time. Skygazers are facing a lot of diminished expectations lately. The problem is light pollution, the urban glow that obscures all but the moon and a few bright stars and planets. Bob Parks wanted, wants to do something about it. He's executive director of the International Dark Sky Association. Bob, good morning. Good morning. How big a problem is this? Well, it's pretty big. Uh... What we associate as good, light has always historically been associated as good, uh, but you can get too much of a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're seeing is just since the advent of the electric light, we want more. So mm -hmm. over a period of a century, we've just added much, much more light to the environment to the point where now it's a real problem. We spend $110 billion annually on wasted light. Mm -hmm. uh, it produces 750 million tons of CO2. We just need to learn to use it more intelligently. It seems like design is a big issue here. It is. Uh, poorly designed light fixtures that are putting more light in the sky than on the ground are just, uh, they're, they're something we can't afford anymore. We used to just use light indiscriminately. We have to. Right. We have to learn to use it more intelligently. Is, is, is there a way of measuring how fast we're essentially losing, um, losing darkness in the country? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, we've done a lot of research on this. Uh, up until the 50s, actually it started with Edison, uh, with the <laughs> invention of the electric light, right. uh, about the turn of the century. But for the last uh, century, we've accelerated. Uh, it didn't become noticeable until the 50s. During the 1950s, uh, astronomers and folks started realizing that they could not see the night sky as well. Our organization was founded in 82. By that point, it was clear there was a problem. And uh, it's growing about 3 to 5 percent every year. Wow. I think people might hear the term light pollution and think, oh, that's a shame you can't see the stars well. But in your research, you have found that this affects our sort of evolutionary rhythms. This affects animals. This affects how we sleep, which are important things. Exactly. I mean, the, the, we were the canary in the coal mines, the astronomers, the amateur astronomers. We saw it first. But the research is showing that it affects every species, and it affects species in a very dramatic way. Circadian disruption, which is... Uh, something we've grown up with circadian rhythms for millennia. We, we have basically 12 hours a day, 12 hours of night. If we get 12 hours of night and 12 hours a day, our body is regulated well. When we start changing that, we start changing our health. And it doesn't just affect us. It affects every species from plants up to humans. But the impact is pretty dramatic. If we uh, don't get enough dark, uh, we don't produce something called melatonin, and melatonin can be a, uh, an inhibitor of all kinds of disease. It's part of the immune system. And uh, we, we're just now finding that even in, like for instance, my room last night at one of the nicest hotels in, in New York City, has, it's not dark inside. Mm -hmm. I was sleeping in the light. Uh, we need to try to sleep in the dark. Bob, how do you reverse this process? I mean, if it's a problem with lighting design and obviously urban sprawl, which continues, I mean, it, it, it doesn't seem particularly hopeful here. Well, I, I have hope. We have a once, in a, uh, a once in a century opportunity right now to rethink how we do outdoor lighting. In uh, the next decade, we're going to relight the entire world with something called LED lighting. Right. It's starting up everywhere. New York City has announced that they're going to replace 250 million street lights or 250,000 street lights in the city. Uh, this is the time to stop and rethink how we do lighting. We could reverse this trend in a decade if we do it right, but it requires government and city officials to think seriously about the wasted energy that we are spending. We could power 8 million homes with the amount of energy being wasted every year. Right. I thought it was fascinating to hear you say we have no sense of our place in the universe anymore. We've either. lost a, right. all connection to the natural world. And uh, the fact that, you know, how do you expect kids to be inspired uh, to reach for the stars when they can't see them anymore? That's a really good it's point. frustrating. Bob, interesting topic. Thank you so much for joining us. This well, thanks morning. for having me.